Hello, I'm David from Nid Church. Welcome to the virtual service of Knaresborough Parish on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Six weeks ago, when lockdown began, the Bishop of Leeds wrote to all clergy. He said, We must not use the language of social distancing, but rather physical distancing distancing. Social interaction is now more important than ever. We just have to be more creative about how we enable people to interact without touch, contact or sometimes presence. We are called to be good shepherds, feeding the sheep whatever the weather. We are physically separated from our families and from each other. Just as the disciples were separated physically from our Lord after the resurrection and ascension. But for over 2,000 years we have remained spiritually and socially close to him and he to us through his gift of the Holy Spirit. This morning he is with each one of us as we worship and pray for our world and ourselves and through him therefore we are united though separated physically distanced yes but never closer in spirit in words from psalm 139 we pray o lord you have searched me out and known me you know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. Amen. The Collect for the Fourth Sunday of Easter Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life. Raise us who trust in him, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, chapter 10, beginning at the first verse. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are, th are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life in it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lucy, thank you for uh, being here to share um, the reading for today. Ladies and gentlemen, All friends, right, Gary! Oh, You're me. all right, mate! What are you doing? Catch up, how lovely to see you. I haven't seen you for ages. It's a, it's a little bit early for you to be up and around, isn't it? 
I know, but I'm on a timetable now. I've got a spreadsheet for all the work for school and I've got to get up in time to do it all because it's just really hard work. Oh, poor you, Ketchup. Well, it's really lovely to see you. To see you. You've, uh, <laughs> excuse me, you've bounced into our Zoom meeting, which um, is Ooh. preparation for Sunday morning service. Oh, that's a, so what are you doing then? What have you been doing? Well, we've just had Thomas and Lucy talking to us, uh, giving us the reading for today, which was fantastic. They did a great job. Did you see that? Oh, no, I didn't. But I'll watch it when it comes on Sunday. Well yeah, do, done, do, Lucy. Do. Well done, Thomas. They're very polished, those kids, aren't they? Really very good. good aren't they? The reading was all about Jesus uh, being the good shepherd and telling us about the way that he looks after his sheep. Jesus has sheep? Uh, really? Well, well, yeah, and it, well, he does because... What he's talking about is the fact that we're all his sheep, that he looks after each and every one of us because he is the shepherd and we are the sheep and he looks after us, his flock, the church. Oh, well that makes sense because you are all looking a bit fluffy without any haircuts. That's a bit true, isn't it, really, Ketchup? You're looking all right, actually. My, my beard's getting a bit woolly, isn't it? But you're looking yeah. well. Is Mrs Gary not cutting your hair in the garden? She's cutting the back of my hair. Oh, good job, good job. Yeah, she, not too bad, not too bad at all. So uh, that was all the message about Jesus today, and we're just going to talk a bit a bit more about that. Would you like to talk to me about that, Ketchup? I would love yeah. to. Oh, because Jesus and sheep are my two favourite things. So what was the <laughs> reading all about then? What was it saying? It was about Jesus opening the sheepfold and allowing people to come in, and he takes care of us as we come and go and make sure that we need to get to where we need to be. Oh, that sounds cool. That sounds and cool. And sounds where, we need, where we need to be is in a relationship with him. Yeah, cool. So how do you do that then? Well, sometimes you need to take the opportunity just to, to slow down your own life, to open your heart, open your ears, open your soul, to listen to what Jesus is saying to you. You've got to multitask then, is that right? Wow! Yes, sometimes that's a bit tricky because we live in this world, but we're also part of another world, so it's getting all that balance right. But we've got to be honest and truthful to both. Wow! So what kind of things does Jesus say then when you're doing all this listening? Well, he points us in the right direction, but fundamentally the message of Jesus is about love and the fact that regardless of the mistakes that we make as human beings, Jesus loves us. I oh, love you. That's nice. Yeah, I love you. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Ah, oh, yeah, well, yes, well, I do love you, Ketchup, but I'm just saying that's what Jesus is saying. I love you. That's why he died for us on the cross. Oh, so you actually hear Jesus saying that then, do you? You do in your prayer life, and um, and you don't have to be uh, in, in, you know, sitting down in, in intense prayer, you can be out for your daily walk and you see Jesus in, uh, in nature and the wonders of the world and you just know that Jesus loves us. Oh, so how, how do you hear him then? What kind of, do you hear his voice in your head or, or something else? It, it's all sorts of, it, it differs for people, Ketchup, because People have different relationships with Jesus. It's important that you have a very personal relationship with Jesus. And some people that might be that they expect Jesus to actually direct them in life. Other people have a conversation with Jesus. Um, uh, you know, it's all that sort of thing. Oh, right. Jesus uh, asks questions as well. Oh, you can ask him questions? You can. And I think it's really important you do ask Jesus questions because um, he didn't put us on this world so that we hadn't, you know, we didn't care about this world. We didn't care about him. He does want to ask us lots of questions um, about, you know, why we're here, what we're about, how we can do things better. Because Jesus asked lots of questions. I've been reading this really good book and it says Jesus asked lots of questions. So I'm going to do a, a quiz for you, Gary. How oh. many questions do you think Jesus asked in the Bible? Was it A, 150, B, 274, or C, 307? Oh. What do you reckon? Oh. Oh. I'll give B. you a clue. It's oh, yeah. the last one. 
Oh, that's C then. Yay! You're a clever hey. one. You're a clever yeah. one. Yeah, 370. That's a lot of questions. So I'm reckoning if Jesus asks questions, he doesn't mind if we ask him questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you think I can ask him about my homework? Do you think he'll help me with all of that? Um, I well, bet he'll know the RE questions for Mrs Vardy. I bet he will. I bet he will know the RE questions. I bet he will know. Um, it, Jesus doesn't quite work that way, Ketchup. He doesn't answer our questions. He doesn't answer our, um, you know, if we're revising or sitting an exam, he doesn't come down and tell us the answers. He actually wants us to be more than we than we are now, perhaps. He wants us to to reach the very best of who we are and that actually might mean that we have to learn things for ourselves so we can grow as people i bet you're glad you asked that question now aren't you oh i am because that wasn't <laughs> on the script but anyway <laughs> anyway so right so he asks us questions and he helps us to find our way and he guides us am i getting that right gary you are and he might i mean things like the lockdown catch up he might prompt us through our prayer to might think about somebody we haven't spoken to for ages or somebody who we know is maybe living on their own who might actually just appreciate something simple like a telephone call yeah that's good it's a bit old school but it's really good i'm phoning my granny and grandma because my granddad because they're, they're not very good with tech um, and to be honest, Gary, I am getting a bit fed up with TikTok, so something else to do would be really good. Fantastic. And the other thing that Jesus talk, talks us about, you know, about love, is the fact actually he might give us some um, direction to be uh, leaders in the church or to, to take some role and responsibility in his church to actually grow his kingdom. Oh, that sounds really cool. It's yeah, well, a Jesus bit like... Sorry, you go on, Gary. No, I was just going to say, Jesus said, I came to give life in all its fullness. Oh, do you know what? That's like ethics motto at school. Oh, that's brilliant. That's great. Do you know what it means? Uh, well, I could do with a bit of help, maybe. Do you know what it means? Well, it means, you know, living the sort of lives where we take care of ourselves and others and our planet. It means having the freedom to reach our full potential, not to overly worry about things, to be thankful for all the great things we have for our family and friends, to enjoy the life God has given us. And this bit, this bit is really important catch up, to have faith and trust in God, that when he guides us, we should follow, for he is the good shepherd. Right, so follow the shepherd because he cares for his sheep. Right, I get that now. Well done, right, Ketchup. I'm off because I've got some more last homework to do, Gary. Um, well, Ketchup, but you do you know what? Do you know yeah. what? You've made me really think. And I'm going to sit still tonight before my bedtime. And I'm going to pray and listen to God and see what he says. Brilliant. Uh, perhaps you could tell your flock to do that. Maybe we could all learn something and follow the shepherd, yeah? Absolutely. Right. Bye. 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 Well, that was unexpected, but it's always lovely to have catch up with us. So let's just take catch up's advice and just close our eyes for a moment as we remember that we are God's sheep, Jesus' sheep, and He wants us to go where He leads us into goodness and purity and love. So let's just bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to hear about you as the shepherd, a shepherd that loves the sheep wants the best for the sheep, to protect the sheep, to love the sheep. And on this Sunday, as our service continues, we ask for your continued blessing upon us this and every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Amen. Bless you all.
Lord, may there be love in our hearts and power in our thoughts when we pray to you today, not from a place of worship, but from the safety of our homes. Look at the world, everything all around us. Look at the world and marvel every day. Look at the world, so many joys and wonders, so many miracles along our way. God, we feel deeply that our world is in trouble with the spread of the coronavirus. There is a heightened sense of fear and anxiety about the future. We ask that we may calmly and lovingly trust in you and care for all who are affected by this pandemic. Please bless the work of our health professionals, our care workers, school and community leaders, supermarket workers and refuge collectors, the firefighters and police force, and all the other professions whose work we have so long taken for granted. Grant them the strength and courage to continue with their unenviable tasks. We pray for our own government and leaders around the world. May God guide them to put all their differences to one side and to work together to find a cure and way through this unprecedented time. And during this terrible time, we must not forget all the countries of the world where poverty and warfare are still a part of daily lives. And now there is another enemy to face. We thank you for our ministry teams in Knaresborough who continue to provide us with spiritual guidance and online services, bringing the whole community together. May all our congregations and faith communities be places of empathy, compassion and calm in all that we face. We also thank you for all the organisations and volunteers who are providing services that have never before been needed. We thank you for the kindness and thoughtfulness now being shown to each other and to strangers. Lord, help us to sustain this kindness and gratefulness beyond this crisis. We pray for our families and friends, many of whom we are currently isolated from. We thank you for our neighbours who offer help but are respectful of our privacy. And we are mindful of those within the community who feel stressed and worried. May they find peace and reassurance and be assured of a warm welcome when our doors can be open again. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who have died and thank you that you are with them on their final journey. And we also pray for those whose anniversaries fall at this time. We pray for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially as their final goodbyes are not as they would wish. Dear Lord, may they find comfort, strength and support in the knowledge that you are with them always. Gracious and loving God, you are our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
At the outset of the pandemic, Bishop Nick suggested that we talk of physical distancing rather than social distancing. Well, here we all are physically distanced, staying home. And yet let's hope that this service may enable us to feel socially and spiritually together, close, as members of one community of faith, one flock under one shepherd. An Easter blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all for whom you care, this day and always. Amen.